Okay, Marge Madness fans, you guys submitted some great questions about the selection process, and earlier today I was able to catch up with the Men's Basketball Committee downtown. They helped provide some great answers to your questions, so let's get started. First of all, Corey Sykes asked, how many ACC teams will get into the tournament this year? Well, Corey, it's a great question, but the fact of the matter is the committee looks at each team as an independent. They're going to look at a lot of different factors, including the RPI, the non-conference strength of schedule, the overall strength of schedule, how they did against teams that are being considered for the tournament, how they did against teams that are already in the tournament during the course of the weekend, uh, selection weekend, of course. Uh, the fact of the matter is there isn't a, a chart that we keep track of during the weekend that has uh, the list of teams from each league and how many teams are in the tournament. It's just not a consideration during the course of the process. What do you see as the benefit of having committee orientation a day before the media come in for the mock selection tomorrow? Well, the, the orientation really helps us get our mindset right as we get ready for uh, the selection and uh, seating and bracketing process in March. And we obviously talk about teams and, and uh, we gain insight into different teams uh, that each committee member uh, is monitoring. But we, we get, a, get ourselves into a mental frame of mind where we're just getting ready for the process in March. And to have the media come in uh, for a couple of days and go through the same process that we'll go through, although compacted into a two-day window, uh, gives them a general feel for what it's really like and dispels some of the perceptions that exist out there about the process. And so it's, it's educational. Uh, it's really a great time for them to have their eyes opened up about things that they uh, hadn't understood before. So uh, it's been a huge benefit to us over the years and great feedback and uh, something that a lot of media want to have an opportunity to do. So I anticipate we'll continue to do it as we move forward in the future. And Marcus Johnson wants to know how the Big East will be seeded since it looks like they'll have a bunch of teams in the tournament this year. Well, the Big East is a strong conference, as it usually is. Uh, again, we don't know how many teams are going to make it. Uh, the principles and procedures, which can be found at NCA.com, uh, already have a provision for something that actually has never happened, and that's more than eight teams from one league making it into the tournament. Uh, that, that provision states that they'll throw out the provision about teams playing one another prior to the regional championship game in the event nine or more teams from one league make it. The committee will do its best to see to it that teams from the same league do not meet prior to the regional championship game. Sometimes they'll exhaust all their options and, and run into roadblocks and they'll have to play a little earlier than that, uh, but they'll do their best to make sure that prior to the regional championship games, teams from the same league won't play. However, if a ninth team or a 10th or 11th, as you described, make it uh, into the tournament, that provision goes away because it becomes impossible uh, to exercise that clause. Um, have you seen any movement in the way reporters actually report on the games and the selection process now that they've been through it? Yeah, I have. And, and you know, one of the things that's very interesting is uh, for so long, I don't think the media, even the public, truly understood how transparent our process is. And uh, the seating and bracketing and selection process, uh, all that information is online at, at NCA.org. And a lot of people didn't know that for so long. And then when we started this process and began to communicate it and talk about it publicly, a lot of people began to go to that site and, and get more information about the process. And, and so the media is much more savvy uh, about what we go through and actually has helped us dispel some of the perceptions that existed out there about the process. So I've seen a shift and hopefully we can continue that as we move forward. Derek Sidbury wants to know if big name matchups will play a part in where these number one seeds will actually play. Well, we don't spend any time trying to create juicy matchups, so to, so to speak. Uh, there's no conspiracy theory to try to get one team to play another team uh, if the team's coach used to be a coach at that school or if a coach from one school used to be an assistant on another team's staff. Uh, the fact of the matter is bracketing doesn't take place until the middle of the afternoon on Sunday. So just a couple of hours prior to selection show at 6 p.m. Eastern on that Sunday. So yeah, there isn't any time, quite frankly, for them to, to create those type of matchups. It's fun for the conspiracy theorists to, to talk about it and and sure, sometimes those happen, but it's just by chance. 
Okay, fans, thanks for submitting your questions. Keep them coming, and we'll try to get them answered as quickly as possible. And we'll be back for our next edition of Inside the Madness.